Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. If you travel in a RV, whether it's a Class A, B, or C, one that you're driving, or just one of these pull-behinds with a pull-behind camper or a fifth wheel like Joan and I use, there's something that I believe is very essential to your safety and what I call those just-in-case moments, and that's using a dash cam. And today, I am going to be reviewing the Viafo VS1 2K dash cam. Uh, we'll show you the pieces and parts, how simple it is to install one of these. I think you'll like this video. with I Love RV Life. Joan and I have been traveling a lot in our RV for almost 10 years now and a lot of times we go through heavily congested areas and I bet you do too. Regardless of the type of RV you use, you go through these larger cities or very congested areas. We all have that story to tell, don't we? Where someone just really took advantage of our big rig and uh, we either had an accident or came very close to having one. And the reason being is uh, we're big, we're large. It takes a lot of space to be able to stop. And when you're in these congested, slow moving traffic areas, you always have that one person, don't you, who just cuts you off and uh, you have to hit the brakes and you've had some very, very close calls. The problem is if that event actually happens, it's your word against theirs. Uh, and a lot of times we, the person who did nothing wrong, gets ticketed because we were, quote, following too close. We can't prove that we had a big gap and dum-dum pulled in front of us and we ended up smacking them in the backside. So I think something like a dash cam, a full featured dash cam, is a critical piece of RV travel. Uh, when I talk about one that is fully featured, you want one with a good camera that's very, very clear. You want to have one that has a built-in GPS so you can show the exact location where you're at. You want date and time stamp, that's important as well. And you want to have the very easy ability to be able to get that video off of that specific event. Hopefully it never occurs, but if it does, so you can show both to the investigating uh, law enforcement personnel who show up, as well as being able to share that with your insurance company to show that it was no fault of your own. It was the crazy person in front of you who took advantage uh, and was in too big of a hurry to get out of your way. So anyway, that's without belaboring that point, uh, we have found one. We have been using a company called Viafo uh, for a while. They've come out some with some very, very nice products um, and I have a new one that I'm going to be looking at today. And the reason I'm looking at this is because of its size and its features. Uh, this, uh, I'll just show you the box for now. This is the Viafo VS1 2K dash cam. Um, it's very, very small, and the reason I, but it's not short on features by any stretch of the imagination. It's uh, one of the reasons that I like it is its size. It's very teeny, but yet it has a very good camera in it. Uh, and I don't take up a whole lot of window dash space. I've seen these that hang down below the mirrors and they're big and they're just bulky and in the way. Not this one. Um, let's open this one up and I'll show it to you. This thing is teeny, teeny, teeny. So um, it's pretty impressive when you look at it. Uh, this is it. That This is this is all there is to it. And, it, and it's really, really small when you look at it, you know, in the center of my hand, uh, that's as big as it is. Um, and it has a mounting pad here with just 3M tape. Look, we've got our other Viaphone that we've tried, uh, and we use the same 3M style tape. Clean the window with alcohol, let it dry really well, then you stick this thing on. We've been in Florida weather in August, <laughs> where I know the inside of that. Um, truck probably was uh, you know 130 140 degrees if not more and uh, we haven't had this thing release so it's done a really really good job but this is a really nice package let me give you just a few uh, features about what it has it does have a front camera this is adjustable so you can kind of set it at the angle that you want um, so that's very very important um, 
2K resolution. So this is uh, what we call 1440p for those of us who do video. So 2K resolution meaning that it's going to be crystal clear. And the reason you want it crystal, crystal clear is so you can read tag numbers. That's really important, especially for that that tag may not be there uh, once they pull in front of you and you smack it. So you want to be able to show that as well. Uh, the other thing I like about this is the camera sensor. They use Sony lenses, Sony camera lenses, image sensors, um, not just the lens, but also the sensor, which is very, very important. I exclusively use, in most of my still cameras, Sony gear. I have for a long time. Uh, in my professional video business that I had, I use nothing. Uh, but Sony equipment. Um, still do a little bit of commercial shooting. Uh, the camera that I'm shooting on right now is a Sony camera. I am just a fan. I think they have the best image sensors around in the market. The other thing I like about these VFOs, and it works fantastic. Or at least the unit that I looked at a year ago worked well, and I think this one will do the same. Um, they have Wi-Fi integration, so they provide an app that's easy to download uh, when you need the image off, you set it to the Wi-Fi this offers. Uh, you, it's very, very simple to be able to activate that. And then you can pull the video out um, that you need to be able to use in case there is an event. Um, and some of us, <laughs> as we drive down the road, see silly stuff happen um, and grab those videos and share them on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen those as well, but you want to have a good camera to be able to do that. This has GPS logging. Again, I think it's very, very critical to have that voice control so you can speak to it about saving the video. That's one option you can do. I have another one that I'll show you as well. Um, it has a voice notification about what's going on. Um, I've had instances with our other VFO where we haven't had an accident. I'm very grateful and thankful that that's never happened to us. Uh, but we've had hit these massive potholes, just boom, you know, shook the whole front of the truck, sound like the earth was caving in on top of us. You know, almost like an experience of having, you know, some type of a collision. And the unit would come back and go, collision detected, a video saved. So it'll do that as well. Uh, and then that way you don't overwrite those because these have what they call first in, first out. So depending on the type of SD card you have in here, um, when you start, when it fills up, when it gets to the very end of it, it starts overlapping again. So depending on the size of your card, you can go many, many, many days uh, before that ever occurs. The big issue is you typically don't want to overwrite more than about 24-ish hours uh, so it'll give you time to pull one of these videos off if you need it for some type of notification issue. And then they offer some uh, optional hardware kits. So let me share with you what you can do for installation. Uh, the easiest thing to do is what comes in the basic box and the kit. So, you know, you get the paperwork type stuff. Um, going here to the bottom, you get what I call a spudger. Any of those of us who have worked on cars, uh, upholstery, those types of things, or if you worked in the electronic industry, you want to have a spudger, so that's important. And then this one comes with, you know, a uh, USB to USB-C card, so you can get video off. It comes with an with an SD card. Uh, this one is a 32, which I think is fine. And then it comes with a uh, a very very long cable and one of those uh, car accessories, cigarette lighter adapter type things that you can use. Um, so literally the installation could be clean the window with a little alcohol, give it a minute to dry, stick this thing on, plug your wire in, and in 10 minutes maybe, maybe 10 minutes, you're headed down the road. So um, that's the easy installation. I'm going to take it another level, and if you saw my last video, um, I, this is what I did. This is, you can also get their optional uh, hardware kit. I'm a fan of these. I just like that neat dash. I don't like wires hanging down in front of me and there's only so many places that you can plug things in and yes you can get adapters for those car accessories, cigarette lighter adapters and plug you know three eight things in there at one time. Nothing wrong with that. You know if that's the way you want to travel that's fine. Um, but I just don't want to deal with all the wires. So this is called the uh, HK5 hardware adapter. So what this does, and my installation is probably going to take me about an hour, and I'll show you bits and pieces of that. Um, this comes with a converter. You see this little, so here's the wiring kit. You can see 
this little converter here. Uh, so this will take 12 volts from your car and convert it to 5. Uh, and then you've got, you know, your wiring here, which would be, you know, negative, positive, battery. And then it's got an ignition wire. I have a different trick. I use something called, uh, I call them cheaters. Uh, some call them fuse expanders. They've got a lot of different names. But I'll find a fuse that only comes on, the power only comes on when you turn the ignition on and drive it. And uh, that way the camera just turns off and on, off and on as, as you're driving. You don't need it to be, you know, on all the time. Or I don't want to have to fool with turning it off and on all the time. I just want to crank the car up, it turn on, turn the car off or the truck, whatever you're using to tow with, and it turns off. And then you've got a lot of wire. I don't know how much this is, but it's far more than I'm going to need that I will fish around the side of the, of the door jam and then across the top and then down to where the camera is located. Now this one's got one other little feature and I, and I have this on the existing F350 that we have. This is called a wireless Bluetooth remote control. Um, and I've used it several times. Uh, I guess what I ought to do is start publishing some of these videos of the crazy stuff that we see when we drive around. It's a little simple thing. Uh, it comes with a battery. It's easy to sync it up. Let me pull it out. This is it. It's this little button right here. If you see, just a little click, click. Little click button. So as you're driving down the road and you see something, and you go, ooh, I need to save this video. You can push that button, click. Um, or you can even speak to the unit, uh, but a lot of times we'll have the radio going and uh, it may or may not hear you just depending on the volume of the radio. But you can click this and, and it'll save the video. So anyway, uh, that's all there is to it. I love this package. I love the packaging that they've done here. This is really, really neat. Really, really teeny. Put it by my face. There we go. So when I mount this, um, I'm going to mount it probably to the left of my driver's side mirror and between the mirror and where the sun visor comes down is what I'm thinking about. All right, so let's go outside and uh, get this hooked up and then we'll take it for a test drive and see what the video looks like. I think this will be fun. I think it's gonna be easy too. All right, I'm getting ready to do my install again. If I was just gonna take this, I'm gonna be mounting it right, right in here. It's so teeny, just right in here. And um, if I was um, just going to use, say, the you know car accessory adapter, one of these right here. Don't laugh at my fire missile. I know I have to be silly sometimes. Um, <laughs> that's that's you know you could just route it down and deal with the wiring or have it have it hanging down here, whatever you know, whatever. But again, I am going to go with this uh, installation kit. <laughs> Um, and ours, and it's not, it's not going to take that long to be able to do it. I am going to need some basic tools. This is the biggie. You'll see me using this one. This is a, what I call a probe, 12 volt probe, and you'll see how I'm going to do that. You know, little things like wire cutters, strippers, and a crimp tool, um, and then I've got these little, I've got bags of these things uh, just to be able to do a little bit of wiring. But that's about it. It's, you know, it's, it's nothing very, very sophisticated to this whole thing. It's pretty e easy. The big issue is coming over here now, whether you're, you know, this is a, a late model Chevy. So whether you're towing with a SUV, um, like a, this is a big Tahoe, um, or you're gonna be towing with something like, a, you know, 1500, 2500, 3500, a lot of them have this fuse panel here on the side. I've already pulled that off. And um, you, you'll see the fuses that are located here. What I'm gonna do is use something called, a, a mini add a circuit uh, some people call these cheaters sometimes some call them fuse expanders those types of things I'll show you how this works it's pretty simple you don't deal uh, get rid of your fuse but this is a low amperage unit it didn't pull hardly anything at all this camera doesn't and uh, so I'm not going to be putting a big drain on these and uh, I'm going to use this instead of cutting all my wiring out up and if I ever want to remove it, you know, that it's, it's a pretty simple task. What I've done is I've probed all these fuses that you see here. This is on the side panel. And uh, every, the, every one of these are hot when the ignition is on. Uh, the good thing about when you try to do this, like on the Ford F350, I didn't have that issue. At least, uh, you know, three or four fuses only turned on uh, when the accessories are on, the engine was running. But there is a fix. Uh, I'll show that to you over here if you're looking at a late model Chevrolet. So on the right side of your dash, uh, you can pull this panel off again. It's just this, these little plastic panels, they just pop right off. 
Um, and you'll see there's bundles, one, two, three, four bundles. This is the power bundle. And if you notice this one here on these late model Chevys, you've got uh, this last bundle that's here at the bottom that has four, um, four brown wires. These are accessory wires, low wattage. You only use them as an indicator. So I've taken my ground probe, I've got it here, and I've pinched this wire. I'm gonna be cutting it. And uh, I'm gonna turn the ignition on. So you'll see the, uh, the light has turned on, so I've got power going to that little indicator. And why that matters is I've got three wires here in the bundle that I'll be wiring. I've got uh, red and ground, red and red power, black ground, and then you'll see this yellow, this yellow wire. And I'm gonna be routing that yellow wire through the back over here to the accessory. I know this is, you know, a little bit of effort now, but it's just one of these things where I don't want to turn the camera off and on, off and on when I'm driving, because I'll forget. And uh, when I turn the ignition on, the camera will come on. When I turn the ignition off, it'll turn off. So um, just, you know, a little thing. If you're going to customize these, it makes it a little bit nicer. All right, let's get some wiring done. I'll show you what this looks like as I kind of get in the middle of it. Okay, next step, I am going to mount the camera before I go any further. I'm just going to use, this is just basic you know, your generic 70% isopropanol alcohol. You don't want to use an alcohol. It might have an additive to it, like a skin softener or an aloe or something like that. It'll leave an oil film. You don't have to use a lot. I'm just going to make sure I don't have any, any kind of an oil scum film. I guess you see a, a little bit of a tint on this, uh, just a regular old generic paper towel will do. And get that good and clean until you hear it squeak. And uh, that'll get any film that's here. It's really important. If you don't do this step, it's not going to stick. You're just always going to have trouble with that thing falling off. And I give it just a second to dry. It won't take long. It's alcohol. And I'll take just a little clean spot of this paper towel. Paper towel works great. Um, don't use something like a, a Kleenex or anything like that. Again, you might have some oil or something on it all right now i'm going to put my mirror back the way i'll be driving because i don't want it to be bumped do something like that now this when you're looking at this um, uh, front of the camera is here and i'm going to be mounting it like so on the window and then it has an adjustment to it um, there's a little film that you want to peel off this thing. If you don't, you won't get good video. And just peel this stuff off right here. And then we are going to stick it right about there. Make sure it's straight. Because once you put it on, it is on, on, on. Okay. And then for this to really stick, put pressure on it. Now that, that little square thing that has the tape mounted to it is the GPS module. Uh, just grab the sides and hold it up. This is a little uncomfortable for about 30 seconds. Um, the longer you push up, the better it's going to stick. I mean, if you can hold it for a good whole minute, um, swap arms if you get fatigued. Don't push it with this. Grab that module. You don't wanna mess up those hinges. So do this for just a minute. Now, the other thing that I'll share with you is once you get this installed, uh, if you have a garage to park it in overnight, that's a good thing. That'll give this glue time to set. Um, if that windshield is, you know, super, super hot, those windshields can get 130, 140, 150, even hotter. You can fry eggs on them. Um, this thing's gonna fall off in, in the initial stay. If you don't have that, get you a big piece of cardboard, stick it under your uh, windshield wiper and uh, lay it over the top of your window and you know just give it give it the day to set and um, like i said on the f350 when i mounted it it's been on there for over a year i've never had it fall off works perfect uh oh sorry about that all right that's stuck that's good and stuck and then in a minute we'll adjust this you can move it back and forth it's good and stiff uh, over in the side here is where the SD card goes in. I've, here, I'll show you. I've already, I don't know if you can make it out. 
probably can't. Right there's the SD card. I've already mounted that. All right, let's run some wires. Everything is buttoned up. It just looks like this. Um, ran that wire up here to the top. There it is installed. Uh, I also did this little button. Uh, if you can make it out, the little button right there. Um, you can press that button and immediately save a file. So if you see something kind of interesting as you're traveling down the road or somebody's cutting up in front of you and you, you know, are afraid that an accident might occur, you can show their misbehaving dealings um, if for some reason the, you know, law enforcement authorities get involved or something like that. So there we go. Uh, let's, let's take it on a test drive and then I'll show you what the videos look like. Well, that wasn't a hard install. Look, if you don't want to go through the extra steps that we went through, it's very simple. Stick it to the window, use the accessory adapter, and in five minutes, you're ready to go down the road. It is just literally that simple. Ours took about an hour and a half with that additional uh, power supply that, was, uh, that you can buy, optional. It does not come as part of the original kit, but uh, you can go that route, about an hour and a half. Now we've just got that confidence, turn the key on, drive, ready to go versus uh, just having to turn it off and on or unplug it from the accessory adapter. It really, it really doesn't matter. The, the camera works the same regardless of the way you choose to power it. So now we have that confidence that as we go down the road and drive through these very congested areas and people who are being a little bit silly in the way they drive, we've got that extra, I won't call it protection, but at least protection from an insurance standpoint that we can show who was in the right and who was in the wrong. Um, and then <laughs> we see so many things as we travel down the road. I can now hit that button and uh, save those recordings and maybe share some of those. Uh, I'm sure we all have tales that we could talk about some of the nutty things that we see as we drive down the road. So I hope you found uh, this video helpful. Uh, we enjoy doing these things, giving these extra tools, extra tips, these types of things we can use in our RV travel. I'd like to thank Viafo providing this uh, VS1 2K dash cam for us to be able to review. Um, these are very, very nice. This is the second one that we've used and we've been very happy with the first one and I'm sure we're gonna be very happy with the second one. I'll put links in the description below in this uh, YouTube video. If you choose to purchase one of these, you can get them off Amazon. Um, or uh, go out to ilovervlife.com if you've never been there. Go out there and do a search. I've got little search windows all over the place. Put in a topic campground, place to go, tips, tricks, uh, mods, uh, fixing things that are broke, any of those types of things. I think it's over 400 and something blogs and almost that many videos to go with them as well. So I hope you find those helpful. I do all this for one reason. I bet you know what it is. You're absolutely right. It's because I love RP Life. Mm -hmm.